Well, it, I mean, on a more practical level, Washington Post just reported in the last hour that Senator Mark Warner is, is assembling a group of senators together to try and convince you to stand down because they don't think you can win. Well, Mark is a good man. We've never had that. He also tried to get the nomination, too. Mark's not. Mark and I have a different perspective. I respect him. And if Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi come down and say, we're worried that if you stay in the race, we're going to lose the House and the Senate, how will you respond? I, I go into detail with them. I've spoken to all of them in detail, including Jim Clyburn, every one of them. They all said I should stay in the race, stay in the race. No one said, none of the people said I should leave. Them. But if they do? Well, it's like, <laughs> they're not going to do that. You sure? Well, yeah, I'm sure. Look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I'll get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. I mean, these hypotheticals, George, if, I mean, if all... But, but it's, it's, it's not that hypothetical anymore. I, I, I grant that the, they have not requested the meeting, but it's been reported... Well, they, I've met with them. I've met with a lot of these people. I've talked with them regularly. I had an hour conversation with Akeem. I had more time than that with Jim Clyburn. I spent time with many hours off and on the last little bit with Chuck Schumer. It's not like I had all the governors, all the governors. I agree that the Lord Almighty is not going to come down. But if 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 you are told reliably from your allies, from your friends and supporters in the Democratic Party, in the House and the Senate, that they're concerned you're going to lose the House and the Senate if you stay in, what will you do? I'm not going to answer that question. It's not going to happen. What's your plan to turn the campaign around? You saw it today. How many, how many people did you get to draw crowds like I drew today? Did you find many more enthusiastic than today? Huh? I mean, I, I don't think you want to play the crowd game. Donald Trump can draw big crowds. There's no question about that. He can draw a big crowd, but what does he say? Who does he have? I'm the guy supposedly in trouble. We raised $38 million within four days after this over, we have over a million individual contributors. Individual contributors, less, less than 200 bucks. We have, I mean, I've not seen what you're, you're proposing. You haven't seen the, the fall off in the polls. You haven't seen the reports of discontent in the Democratic Party, House Democrats, Senate Democrats. I've seen it from the press. You know, I've heard from dozens of your supporters over the last few days, and a variety of views, I grant you that. Uh, but the prevailing sentiment is this. Uh, they love you. And they will be forever grateful to you for defeating Donald Trump in 2020. They think you've done a great job as president, a lot of the successes you outlined. But they are worried about you and the country, and they don't think you can win. They want you to go with grace, and they will cheer you if you do. What do you say to that? I say the vast majority are not where that those folks are. I don't doubt there's some folks there. Have you ever seen a group at a time when elected officials running for office aren't a little worried? Have you ever seen that? I've not. Same thing happened in 2020. Oh, Biden, I don't know, man. What's he going to do? He may bring me down. He may. Mr. President, I've never seen a president 36 percent approval get reelected. I don't believe that's my approval. Right? That's not what our polls show. And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. Look, George, think of it this way. You've heard me say this before. I think the United States and the world is at an inflection point. The things that happen in the next several years are going to determine what the next six, seven decades look like. And who's going to be able to hold NATO together like me? Who's going to be able to be in a position where I'm able to keep the Pacific Basin in a position where we're, we're at least checkmating China now? Who's going, to, who's going to do that? Who has that reach? Who, has, who knows all these? We're going to have, I guess, a good way to judge me is you're going to have now the NATO conference here in the United States next week. Come listen. 
Sumitai Sai.